Let's speak to Mike Billington. He's the executive. He's with the Executive Intelligence Review, and he joins us via Skype from Leesburg. Many thanks for joining us here on Press Eve, Mr. Billington. Now, when U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry calls for a demilitarization of occupied features in the South China Sea, does he also mean that when that demilitarization does occur, the U.S. will also move away its military installations away from the South China Sea area? No, no, of course not. Uh, first of all, let me say, I don't think John Kerry believes what he's saying. He, he sometimes has to voice uh, the, the orders from his boss, while sometimes behind the scenes he's making much more sense, as he does with, uh, with uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov in Russia. But nonetheless, this is the Obama policy. Uh, and the idea that China is militarizing the South China Sea is, of course, ludicrous. Uh, these uh, SAM missiles they discovered recently discovered uh, these are uh, defenses that have been in these islands for 30 or 40 years, and they've always known they were there. And of course, all the other countries that have uh, occupied islands have defenses. But th that's not the point. The point is that we are on the brink of thermonuclear war with Russia and China. Uh, the uh, general collapse of the Western financial system, now sweeping through the European banks and about to hit Wall Street, has driven uh, Obama and his British Wall Street uh, controllers to, uh, to insanity, and I, I mean insanity. The British Empire is, is threatened with being destroyed once and for all. Uh, what Putin has done in Syria has demonstrated that you can defeat terrorism if you defeat the imperial policy of trying to uh, carry out regime change against regimes that don't follow the dictates from London and, and, and uh, New York. Uh, and as a result, he's, he's turned to Asia. And we're now facing a massive, massive escalation of the most advanced U.S. controlled uh, strategic, military strategic forces in history along China's border. Not only in the South China Sea, where they're occupying a half a dozen to a dozen bases with advanced air, sea, and land power, but as you know also, they're using the excuse of the North Korean nuclear test and a, and a launching of a satellite to deploy THAAD missiles. Uh, B-52 bombers, Raptor jets, uh, again, the most advanced military strategic forces in a ring around China, which the Chinese have identified quite publicly. Through right, but Mr. Mr. Billington, are you then saying that the U.S. government sees its advantage allowing and stoking tensions with China? They're, they're, they're more than stoking tensions. They're going for war. The policy is that Russia and China must back down from the policy that they've implemented through the BRICS, through the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, through basically creating a new paradigm in the world as a whole to counter the bestial anti-growth, anti-science policies dominating Europe and the United States. They've created through the BRICS, through the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, uh, a policy of developing nations throughout Asia, Africa, South America. This is a severe threat to the power of the bankrupt financial interest in the West. Right. They are committed to force Putin and Xi Jinping to back down, which they, they will not, which means, as many of our own military intelligence and diplomatic corps acknowledge, Obama's policy is driving us to the brink of thermonuclear war, far more serious than the Cuban Missile Crisis, and yet the American people are uh, sleepwalking into war with a Congress which is cowardly, and a presidency which is insane. All right, so I'm going to have to stop you there. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. That's Mark, Mike Billington with the Executive Intelligence Review joining us via Skype from Leesburg. Mr. Billington, thank you very much indeed for your comments here.